Hello, nice that you take part. My name is Peter Barski of Holy Mid Germany and in this series of short presentations I would like to introduce you to our bioresonance instrument which is called RemiWave Pro. RemiWave Pro is an instrument which provides various features which are hard to find elsewhere. Basically there are two different ways to use the instrument. One way is to use the instrument in standalone mode and operating it by the front panel controls. Another way to use the RemiWave Pro is to connect it to a PC by an USB to glass fiber converter and completely remote control all functions of the instrument. The connection is made by a glass fiber interface to prevent any direct connection to the wall power and to prevent interfering signals which may come from the computer if it would be connected using a plain copper wire. Here in this part of the presentation we will talk about the standalone mode and the elements on the front panel. You may know that the bioresonance uses some input signal, processes the signal and sends the result to the client. So we need input channels and output channels. RemiWave Pro has two input channels and two output channels. Both the input channels and the output channels are not just connected by a wire. No, they are completely decoupled from each other using so-called decoupling amplifiers to prevent shortcuts and unwanted interactions. Why do we have done this? Well, you could use different kinds of electrodes such as the hand electrodes, the foot electrodes or roller electrodes, pod electrodes and if you have connected them to different locations then a simple wire connection between the channel tracks would shortcut the electric fields of the body and it is known from energetic tests like the EAV or other tests that this is not helpful for the bioresonance and should be avoided in any case. The decoupling of all channels from each other allows you to use different kinds of electrodes simultaneously. The next element on the front panel we like to look at is this signal source selector. In the leftmost position the integrated test tray is connected to the bioresonance kernel of the instrument and the test tray amplifier is also decoupled from all the other channels to avoid any interference. This test tray is also compensated against electropollution because for bioresonance it is recommended to attenuate the 50 or 60 Hz mains power background noise. Okay, in this test tray you will place substances which you have tested to be energetically positive using a test method like the EAV, which is the electroacupuncture according Dr. Fall, or using the kinesiology or the tensor rod or the RAC pulse test. These are only examples. You may use any energetic test method you might find suitable. Okay, using such method you have found certain substance or substances which are sometimes also called analog modules and you place them into the test tray for bioresonance transmission to the client. This is also called exogenous bioresonance because external information sources are used. Okay, let's go back to the signal source selector. In the middle position the input channels and the electrodes connected to them are used as the signal source. 
And finally in the right position both the test tray and the input channels are used simultaneously for the bioresonance transmission. This combination saves you time at certain applications. Ok, the next front panel control defines how the information is transferred. In bioresonance there are two basic ways to transfer the information and one of them is called inverse mode and the other non-inverse mode which is also known as true phase or natural mode. In the literature you may also read about an anti-phase mode. This is identical to the inverse mode. The users of the bioresonance may also speak about an A and an AI mode and these are just other words for non-inverse and inverse bioresonance transmission. For better understanding what these modes mean you may imagine two pendulums which you hold in your hands. When you swing them into the same direction then both pendulums are in phase and the pendulum in the left hand might be considered to be the information at the input whereas the pendulum in the right hand represents the output signal. So in phase means that both channels swing into the same direction. Now when you turn around the swinging direction of one of these pendulums then you just have what is called inverse mode. In other words when one pendulum moves forward the other moves backward and vice versa. The inverse mode is usually used to reduce the energetic stress and is therefore called debug by our friends from Great Life Technologies in the USA and the non-inverse mode is usually used to enhance certain aspects of the energetic field of the body and is therefore also called the upgrade mode. Ok, so much about these controls. Now let's have a look at the main selector switch. Here the leftmost position of the switch is labeled online which means when you turn this switch to this position then the whole instrument is completely remote controlled and all the controls here on this panel have no function. When you try to change one of the settings then you will hear a certain sound which indicates that the control is currently not used. We will talk about the online functionality in a later part of this presentation. The next position of the knob is simply the off position, what means the instrument is simply switched off. The next choice is labeled balance and this is a mode which is recommended to be used before an energetic test is done and its purpose is simply to remove or to attenuate the energetic stress which accumulated during the day such as kind of exhaustion or tiredness or things like this. All what you have to do for using this mode is to give the client the input and the output electrodes in his or her hands, set the instrument on balance, select the electrodes as information source Select the inverse AI mode and push the start button. This is all what you have to do. The instrument will then run for about 3 minutes and then switch off automatically. Ok, the next sections here deal with the so called automatic mode. We will talk about that in greater detail in the next session of this series of presentations. The advantage of this automatic mode is that no further more detailed settings of the bioresonance instrument is necessary. All you have to do is select the time and this is here 5, 10 or 30 minutes or even continuous run in certain situations or applications. Please see part 2 of this series of presentations for further details on the automatic mode. The next choices which we have are the constant modes which are shown here in red and this means constant times 2 and constant times 10 what simply means the amplification 
is held at a factor 2 or the factor 10, whereas in automatic mode this continuously varies. And we need the constant mode, for example, for testing the energetic influences of substances like allergens or to use the crosslink test which was developed by naturopath Martin Keimer. The next setting here with the single sine wave and the red horizontal line limits the operation of the bioresonance system to the extremely low frequencies and the direct current what means the electric or electrostatic field what we may measure at the body's surface. Robert Becker in the USA once discovered that the low frequencies and the electrostatic field may play a role with energetic stress and this is the reason why all our bioresonance systems include the 0 Hz direct current mode. Okay, the next setting shows two sine waves which means the frequency is a little bit higher, yes indeed. And the next setting shows even more of these waves. And as you might already have thought, yes, this is high frequency. Some users of the bioresonance want to limit the transmission to certain ranges of the frequency spectrum and these settings just provide this functionality. So, to conclude, when you use RemiWave Pro in standalone mode, you will select the basic type of operation using the phase selector switches A and AI. You select the source of information, either the test tray or the input channels. And you select the type of processing which is done inside the instrument. Finally, here we have two additional buttons. One of them is red, the other one is green. These two buttons are included because sometimes it happens that during the transmission process the client suddenly feels good and he or she would like to keep the instrument just within the current parameters. And the client can do this by pressing the red stop button which actually is not a stop of the instrument but a stop of the internal changes in the system. And now the instrument will work on the current frequency range and amplification range until this button is pressed again or the instrument is shut off. On the other hand, sometimes it happens that the client says that a certain frequency or amplification is not that good. Then by pressing the green button, this parameter set is skipped while the internal information processing continues. So these two buttons give the client the ability to interact with the system during the session. Okay, these are all the controls which can be used in the standalone mode of RemiWave Pro. And we are now at the end of the first part of this series of presentations. And it would be great if you also have a look at the other videos. Thank you for watching and see you. Bye bye.